Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to use the Flask extension called Flask Assets. So Flask Assets is a way to handle your static resources, and by that I just mean your JavaScript files and your CSS files that will be used in your app's templates. So before I get into actually showing you how to use Flask Assets, I want to show you this cheat sheet that I made for Flask. Um, I think it has a lot of useful things that you would need to know anytime you're building a Flask app and some links that may be useful for you uh, when you're working on your app. So if you want this cheat sheet, just go to the link in the description below and you can download it. So like I said, using Flask Assets is a way to handle your static files. So typically, um, a site will have more than one JavaScript file and more than one CSS file. Not always, but typically. So if you have, say, five JavaScript files, uh, there's a good chance that you'd want to combine them all. There's really no reason to do five separate requests um, every time a user loads a page. So you could just bundle those five JavaScript files together in one and then serve that one JavaScript file because it's um, the browser doesn't really care if you have all the code in one file, but you as the programmer probably care just to keep your code organized. And the same thing goes for CSS. And on different pages, uh, you may have different bundles of files and Flask assets can uh, help you handle that. So let me get into actually showing you how to use it. So right now I have a basic Flask app set up that returns a template and I have a template that doesn't do anything exciting. It doesn't load any files. All it does is uh, display Flask assets example. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create some JavaScript files. And uh, I'll start with that example. And then the CSS example will be analogous, but I'm not going to actually show it in the video because it's pretty much the exact same process. So uh, first thing you need is a static directory where you're going to keep all of your static files. And I don't have anything in there yet, so I will create a new file. And I don't want it here. So let's see. I'll save it. And I'll call the first one home.js. And then I'll create a new file. I'll call the second one uh, add.js. I'll put a addition function in there. This is obviously a contrived example, but... Um, this is what we're going to work with. So I have these three JavaScript files in my static directory. And I'm going to write some code for them. And then I'm going to combine them using Flask assets. So let's see. For add, I'll write an addition function. So I'll say return. Uh, this should take in an A and B. Return A plus B. Not very exciting stuff. Subtract. A, B, return, A minus B. And then home, let's say, I'll just put an alert here saying uh, the home.js file has been loaded. So I'll save all three of those. So I have those three JavaScript files and they're three separate files. So if I wanted to include them in my template, I usually do something like this. So script type text, JavaScript, source, and then URL for static, and then uh, home.js. And this should have the uh, template brackets. So I'm missing something here. Oh, the closing script tag. And then I'll do the same thing for the other two files. So add and subtract. So I'll save all three of those and I'll refresh my page. And URL four takes exactly one argument, two were given. So I think I know what the issue is. I forgot the file name parameter. So file name equals home.js. And it is the same for the other two. So I'll save and refresh. 
Okay, so I see the pop-up saying that home.js has been loaded. And then if I view the source for this page, I see I have links to all three files. So there's subtract, there's add, and obviously home is loaded because we saw the pop-up. So now if I use Flask assets, I can actually combine all three of these into one file that gets generated for me uh, by Flask assets. So the first thing you need to do is install Flask assets if you don't have it already. So it's simply pip install Flask underscore assets, um, the same as installing any other Flask extension. So once you have it installed, you'll need to import a couple of things from the extension. So from Flask assets, import bundle and environment. So bundle is going to be used to actually combine the files. So I'll assign a variable for this bundle. I'll just say JS and then I'll instantiate a bundle. And now I have to list all the files that I have. So I have home.js, I have add.js, and I have subtract.js. And I need to just apply an output. So I'll say output and um, I'll create a new directory called gin and I'll give a file name of um, main.js. And then I need to register uh, the bundle, but first I need to uh, create an environment. So I'll call it assets and this is just by convention. So assets is going to be environment and you pass in the Flask app. And finally, you register the bundle on the assets. So the first parameter is going to be the name that's used in your template. So I'll just say main underscore JS. And then the second argument is going to be the actual bundle that I created above. So it's simply JS. So that's all I need to do to um, create the bundle on the Python side. In the template itself, what I need to do is instead of including each individual file, I only need to include one, but to have access to the bundle that gets created, I need to wrap this script in this assets block, passing in the name of the bundle. So I use main.js in the Python code, and then I just need a closing um, block for in assets. And instead of the source being URL for static and the file name is home, I'm going to get rid of this completely. And it's simply going to be asset URL. So as long as you wrap the script in this block here with the name of the bundle, uh, you will have access to the URL that gets generated for you. So I'll save the page and I will restart the server. I think it already restarted, but I'll just do that to be safe. And I'll refresh the page. And I see home.js file has been loaded. So we know that the home file is working at least. And if I view source, I see I only have one JavaScript file. So if I click that, I see that I have the alert that I wrote in home. And I also have the two functions that uh, I wrote in both add and subtract. And they're combined into one file. So if I look at my directory, I see a new gen folder has been created. And then this main JS file has been created. So I'll show that here and the three files have been combined. So now if I have multiple templates in my app, I can just simply include that bundle in the same way I do it here, and it will work exactly the same. And of course, if you have many pages in your app, then you'll probably have several bundles, but um, it just depends on what your use case is. So it's pretty simple stuff. Uh, CSS is analogous, so instead of uh, having a bunch of JavaScript files, you have CSS files instead, and your output would output to some CSS file. And in your template, you would link to that asset URL once you wrap your link in um, the block with the CSS bundle name. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about using Flask assets, uh, you can just leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.